everyone. Today I'm going to be talking to you about leopard geckos and royal pythons. So, first of all, this is Cleo. Cleo is a leopard gecko. She's about three years old and she is one of my females because I actually breed these guys. This is what they look like in the wild where they're naturally existing, where they've got the little black and brown speckles and the sort of orangey yellow and greenish kind of skin tone underneath. This is to help them camouflage into the grass. So when they're in the dry sort of brownish ground out there, they can blend into the sort of brown, browny yellow grasses and in between the rocks and stuff. So the predators don't find them, like birds and I actually am not sure what else, foxes and stuff. In captivity, we actually have something else where we have called morphs. So a morph in reptiles is kind of like their colour and what they look like. So if she is the type that's like from the wild, she's a wild type morph or a normal morph. Whereas I've also got one that's pure white and that one's called a Diablo Blanco. And then I've got another one that's really, really orange and it's called an Afghan Tangerine. So you can get loads of different colours, white, black, yellow, red, all sorts. And they're just really, really cool. So she's the type that you get in the wild and she's the normal colour for there. And what I'll do now is I'll show you cheese. And cheese is an Afghan tangerine. So as you can see, there's a big difference between these two. Cheese over here has very few of those stripey sore spots here. Whereas Cleo has got lots of little spots and little stripes along her back. Cheese also has a really nice tail where the orange comes down into the tail. And she's got a lovely stripe in the middle. Whereas Cleo's has got an, only a tiny bit of orange and lots of little individual spots. So in the wild, these stripes would not have helped cheese to hide from predators, whereas the spots do because it kind of confuses them. Where you see, it's like when you see something out of the corner of your eye, you're not quite sure if you saw it. That's what camouflage is trying to do, to try to help them to make sure that a predator doesn't actually see where they are and manage to have them for breakfast. So just talking about morphs again, this is Artemis. Artemis is a Diab Diablo Blanco, which means she is pure white. She has no sort of brown, yellow or green pigmentation like they would in the wild and is, is like really, really pretty. She's just really clean looking. I really, really like her. So Diablo Blancos are pure white and then you can also get a different type called Black Knights and they're actually, like the name suggests, they're pure black. The entire of them is black, but they're really expensive so I don't have one, but I'm hoping to get one at some point. So Artemis has got all white pigmentation except if you look really closely along her sides here, you'll see there is a really small amount of yellow. Another thing really interesting about her is her eyes. If I can get her to turn around. She's got eyes that I've got, <laughs> I'll turn her this way. Uh, they, they're black at the front and white at the back. So this is called a snake eye, and it means that the pupil is more situated to the front of the eye, so they can see better. But it's really funny because if both her eyes look like this, she looks kind of cross-eyed. So one of the great defense mechanisms that a, le a leopard gecko has is their tail. So you can see here the fact that it looks like there's individual little bumps going along the tail. Not the little ones, but the entire sections. Each one of those lines is actually a breaking point. So what happens is when a bird is swooping in to try to catch them, they take their tail and they put it straight up in the air. What they do then is they wave it side to side really, really slowly. And the bird sees this movement, it's like, haha, I found a lizard. They swoop in, they grab the tail, and the lizard pops it off. It just comes off completely. So at any of these segments, if I grab the very end here, she can break it here. If I grab it here, she can break it up here, etc. So they can literally just pop it off entirely so that they can run away and escape. When the tail pops off and is separated from the leopard gecko, the tail will keep moving even though it's not attached. It'll keep wiggling and moving. So the bird who has it is like, haha, I still have the lizard. I still have this and I'm gonna eat it and it's gonna be great. And they get back to their nest and half the lizard is missing. So it's really, really cool just that they have that as a defense. And it means that in the wild, if one has been grabbed and got away, hey, come back, please. What are you doing? Jeez, chill out. It means in the wild, if one manages to get away, they'll actually only have half a tail, or they'll have no tail at all. They do regrow their tail, but it looks like a weird turnip. 
I don't like the way it looks, but it just looks really strange. It doesn't have the thick bottom and thin point anymore. It just has a weird lumpy shape. Like you stuck an apple to your butt. It just doesn't look right. It looks, it doesn't look like a tail anymore. But it does the job and their tail is where they store their fat. So this is actually really, really squishy. It's really squishy and really soft. And it's because that's where they store all their fat for the winter. So you know the way some mammals hibernate? Leopard geckos do something very similar. So in the winter, what they do is they do something that's kind of like hibernating, but it's called brumation. So in brumation, they don't go to sleep and sleep all the way through winter. What they do is they take really long naps. So in the 24 hour day, they'll sleep for about 20 hours of it, maybe 22. And they'll wake up just for an hour here and there to get a drink of water and then go back to sleep. But usually they don't eat. So when they're not eating in the winter, their fat tail gets smaller and smaller and smaller because they're actually using up the fat to stay alive. They're using it for energy to power their heart and their lungs and all that sort of stuff. So then in spring, they're monsters. They eat everything. They need to make up for three months of not eating anything at all. They go nuts. And that brings us to what does a leopard gecko actually eat? So, in the animal kingdom, including us, for food, we have carnivores, which eat only meat. We have omnivores, which eat meat and plants. And then we've got herbivores, who only eat plants. So an example of a herbivore is like a horse. Horses eat grass and hay and nuts and stuff like that. Omnivores, we have us. We'll eat a steak for dinner, but we'll also have some potatoes on the side. And a carnivore would be like a lion, or technically, like a leopard gecko. So a carnivore is something that eats other animals, and insects count as animals. So leopard geckos are technically carnivores, but more specifically, they're something called insectivores, because they eat only insects. And these are two of the main types of insects they eat. Dubia roaches, which is a type of cockroach, and morio worms, which is obviously a type of worm. So, morio worms, these guys are wriggly and disgusting. However, they are a type of beetle that hasn't grown fully yet. So these guys develop into beetles and the beetles are of no use because they don't actually, leopard geckos don't eat the beetles, but they love the worms. So these guys wiggle around and the leopard gecko senses the movement and can move in, see them and go, oh. there's other types of worms that they will eat. There's mealworms, which are roughly half the size of this and much skinnier, but because they're half the size, you need a lot more to feed a leopard gecko. Whereas a leopard gecko will eat maybe 10 of these in one go, but a leopard, an adult leopard gecko only needs to eat every two to three days. So they'll eat dinner on the Monday and they won't need dinner again till the Thursday. And it's really handy because they're just really easy to feed because this is what they get. Because in the wild, you're not gonna find food every day. You're definitely not going to find an entire tub of food just sitting there for you to eat. So these are dubia roaches. Dubia roaches are a type of cockroach and they are the best type of food you can feed a leopard gecko. They've got a load of nutrients in them and they move really fast so the leopard geckos get some exercise running around hunting them. So these are the adult ones. This is a female. It doesn't have wings. Whereas... Sorry, madam. This here is a male and it has a set of wings on it. These guys aren't great at flying. However, if I left this tub open and he managed to climb up onto the edge and he jumped off, say, the table or off a shelf, he'd use the wings to glide down, which would be terrible in my house because I do not want these guys loose. And then the little tiny guys here are just baby roaches. So I have baby leopard geckos and I have leopard geckos who are more delicate than others because some, some of my guys are like really old or some of them don't eat very well. So for them, they get the baby roaches instead because they're easier to eat and they're smaller. So I have to feed them a lot more, but they're really, really nutritious and stuff. Cleo obviously is an adult, but she's also one of my breeding females because I breed these guys, I have the babies, and then I sell them on to people who actually want to keep these guys as pets. So she's an adult. But now I'm going to show you some of the babies. So the first baby here, this is Salt. Salt is actually one of Cleo's babies. Salt is roughly two months old and you can see 
She's nearly as long as her, but she's way thinner. You can see she's not half as wide, she's not half as heavy. She's got her eyes closed currently because she's an albino. So she prefers for it to be less bright. And down here, obviously, it's, it's fairly bright out right now. Cleo, where are you going? Stop it. Come back. No, 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 no reaching out. <laughs> Cleo, I'm going to put you away for a second. We're talking about the babies. So this is salt, and salt is... An albino baby. So an albino is one that does not have any sort of black on them. Salt is roughly roughly two months old at the moment. I think she's only a few days off. And she is a gorgeous little girl. She's got her pink and yellow stripes. And as she gets older, the, either the pink stripes will go away or the yellow stripes. We're not sure. Babies, when they're born, they have the big stripes straight across the body. And this is so they can hide in blades of grass. So when the grass have got the the shadows going over them, they blend in really well. Obviously, albinos in the wild don't hide half as well, whereas the proper, normal wild type guys are yellow and brown and green and black. Honey, come back. No, no, what are you doing? Hey, Salt, come here. Come here. It's just because it's really bright, she doesn't want to be here. Look, house. You can go in your house. Leopard geckos are also very stubborn and don't ever do what you want them to do. There we go. Good girl. So in comparison to her, they grow very, very fast because there's no, there's no, they're not going to survive in the wild if they're always really, really tiny. So she's two months old, whereas this is a baby who hatched actually yesterday. So this is a one day old baby and they are tiny. So I'm not going to put my hand in with them because I don't want to scare them. But if I put my hand on this side, you can see she's smaller than my thumb. She is very, very small. I'm saying she because I think it's a she, but you can't tell for certain until they're older. So I'll be able to tell with salt soon, but this baby I won't be able to tell for a couple of months. But they are tiny and adorable. This baby obviously is also an albino as well which is really cool because in the pet trade there's a load of albinos but in the wild there isn't many at all because in the wild if they're pink and white and bright yellow they're not going to be able to hide very well and birds are going to see them from miles away and swoop in and eat them so in captivity we have lots of yellow and pink morphs whereas in the wild they just don't exist baby leopard geckos can drop their tails as well but they have a second defense they like to scream they try to frighten away predators by screaming at them. And although their screams sound like tiny kettles, in their mind, they look something more similar to this. So the next animal I'm going to show you is Noodle. And Noodle is a royal python, also called a ball python. The reason they were called royal pythons is because these guys are originally from Egypt. And in Egypt, what they used to do was they'd have baby ones, and these guys like to coil up around things. They like to ball up around stuff. So they used to have them on their wrists and wear them like bracelets. And the snakes were completely happy just sitting there, and the royals, like, like Cleopatra and stuff, they'd have the snakes wrapped around their arms and around their uh, necks and stuff, and they'd look really impressive. Hello there. Um, so that's why they were called royal pythons. Nowadays, we're far less creative. And when we started keeping them as pets, like people started keeping them as pets, when they're babies and they get scared, they curl up into a ball. And they wrap up into a ball and they don't move. So we nicknamed them ball pythons instead. So they're called royal pythons, but they're also called ball pythons. And they are an amazing little species of snake. This is Noodle. Noodle is a male. He is roughly two or three years old at the moment, I think. And he is fully grown. This is as big as he's going to get. So he's roughly, what is he, four feet long, roughly. So he's, he's four subways long. There we go. And he is gorgeous, aren't you? So 
So right now what he's doing is he's doing the little tongue flicks. He's doing a blah, blah, blah. So with the tongue flicks, what they're doing is they've got a gland in their mouth that lets them taste smells. So what that does is it means that if a rat or a mouse was to pass through here and he comes here after, he can go blah, blah, blah and smell that there was a rat or a mouse and know, hey, that was food that's been here recently. I'm hungry. I'm going to follow the smell of it. So he can taste the air and figure out where the food has gone. That's more in the wild. I don't have a rat in my kitchen that I hope of. And uh, he would have hunted like that. That's what they do. So they've got the gland in the roof of their mouth called the Jolison's gland. And the tongue is literally just to pull the air into it to hit the gland so they can smell slash taste where the food is. Or if there's a bigger snake nearby, that might be a predator. So obviously they want to, they, they go blah, blah, blah and realize, I don't want to be here, I might get eaten. So that's why they do that. And it's very cute as well, because they're basically just sticking their tongue out at you. So, Noodle, if you would come back and be so kind, sir. Hello, where's your head? Oh, there it is, hello. Say hello to the camera, not me. <laughs> Sometimes they're not cooperative <laughs> and they tend to hold on and not want to let go, but that's okay. These species are constrictors. So you'll, hear, you'll have heard of like cobras and rattlesnakes. They've got venom. So if they bite you, you can get hurt pretty bad or die because they use that to hunt for their food. Whereas these guys, they don't have any venom. They're not venomous. They're not in any way dangerous to you unless they squish you because they're constrictors. They constrict and squish the food they want to eat. So in the wild, they'd catch a rat and what they do is they grab the rat and they curl up around it to hold it still so they can eat it. So if he got, if he decided in his head that he was big enough to eat me, which he really isn't, this guy's not big enough to eat anything bigger than a guinea pig. So he's, he's fine. But if he decided he wanted to eat me, what he could do is he could curl really tight around my arm and squeeze me and squeeze me thinking that I'm going to be eaten. But really, it's just going to squeeze my arm a bit. So these guys are brilliant to have. But if you yourself are handling one, just make sure there's an adult nearby because if they wrap around your neck and you can't get them off, they can choke you up a little bit. But they're usually very safe and fine. Aha, I got your tail. We will be showing people you after all. There we go. Right, so this is him. He has a brown kind of black pattern on his body, all these bits here. And I think it looks cool because it kind of looks like, like that looks like a frog's face. That one looks like a ghost. And you can see cool little patterns in them. They're really cool. And then they've got a white belly with little sort of checker marks further down. So you see it kind of looks like a chessboard at the bottom half of his body here. So their scales are really, really smooth on the top. A common myth that people say is the snakes are slimy and they are not. They're completely dry. Remember, if this guy's originally, this species is from, Euro, uh, from Egypt, there's not a lot of water there. There's the Nile and that's about it. So he's, it's really dry there. So if these guys were wet, they dry out and die pretty quickly. So these guys are actually really dry and nice to handle. The bottom, they've got bigger scales and this is how they move. They have grips along their body and these scales, what they do is they face downwards and to move, they lift the scale and then they push themselves. Then they lift the scale and they push themselves. So that's how they move because obviously they have no legs. So if I put him down and you see him moving a little, he's actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera because it's very small, but he's actually using his scales to push himself along and then when he wants to go faster, he'll slither. So he'll do the, like, like we see in cartoons and everywhere, he'll do the sort of slithering motion. Whereas right now when he's going straight, you'll see kind of here, you can see his skin, he's gripping and then he's pulling on. I don't know if you can see it anymore, I think he stopped because now he's trying to escape off the table. Come back. Sir, please. Now that we've retrieved Noodle from the side of the table, I can tell you that they shed their skin. So most of you probably know snakes do shed their skin. What they do is they Oops, come here and let me see your face. From their nose, they'll shed all the skin like a little, they'll take it off like a little cap, right? And they take off the jaw part and what they do is they slither out of the entire thing. And 
basically you end up with a really long sock. It looks like a sock, a scaly sock that came off them. And that's their skin. And what they do is they leave that behind and they slither off and do their own thing. Males use this to mark their territory. So what they do is they leave the shed around where they live in the wild and other snakes come in with blah, blah, blah and say, oh, another male lives here. He might want to fight. I don't want to go near here. I'm going to go somewhere else. Whereas in captivity, we just take out the shed. I use Noodle's shed to, I stick it to a canvas actually, because it looks really pretty, because it keeps the pattern on it of, Noodle, please, please, I swear I'll put you back in two minutes. Um, it keeps the pattern of the black, and what I'll do is I'll actually, I'll show you the shed uh, now. So these are the two canvases I made with Noodle's shed. And I literally just glued them on and I just really liked them because of the pattern. So that's it for today. Uh, I showed you the leopard geckos and I've showed you the royal python noodle. So if you have any questions, ask your leader and she can send them on to me and I can answer them. And that's, that's it. So next time I've got more and if you guys enjoyed this I can show more animals. And I hope everyone is keeping entertained at home. Bye!